Um, so part of why we do the makeup and the jewelry in this yogini tradition is we are in union with her. Union, yoga. Yoga is the Sanskrit word um, meaning many things, including union. And so there's no separation. When we are on this yogini path, the goal is yoga. The goal is union with her, as her. So, for example, sometimes she puts us to really uncomfortable things. Like right now, I'm super nervous. Like my heart is beating. I'm, my hands are shaking. This is very, very radical for me to be talking about all of this. This is, I'm pushing the edge of Samaya here. I'm pushing the edge of lineage secrets that I've committed to. Um, but this is what I was guided to do today. So what we do is these are her eyes. We decorate. We decorate our eyes to become her eyes. That's her third eye. These are her lips. This is her voice. We decorate the lips to express her voice. We wear the Shakti adornments. I'll tell you about all about Shakti adornments in the workshops. Why do we always have anklets that never come off? Why do we always wear the bangles? Why do we wear the color red and black and all the other things, the earrings? We adorn ourselves as her, for her, becoming the offering. No separation, full yoga, union. But then also the whole science behind the symbology, but also the use um, of these as tools of Shakti for our own yogic practice, discipline, and um, achievement. All right, so that's a little bit about all of that. Um, I've been using my Yogini teacher's book in these last few days as an oracle. Um, this is a book of many names. So like many of the grand uh, queen archetypes or mothers of the universe or all these you know, main goddesses, various traditions. They have many names, they have many forms. So anyway, today I asked Ma, what do you want me to know? And look at here we are now with this long, daring dialogue in Kali Yuga. So this is uh, what I was, what I read today and, and what I was told to read to you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So we're bringing in an awareness of the full cycle of creation, preservation, transformation, which is a part of Kali's work. So one of the things about Kali is she just simply reminds us that Every single thing in the universe that has a form has rules that we all share. And it's kind of really beautiful knowing, and this is one of my things that I'm, I'm really grateful for in this time of dissolves that we're witnessing, is the, is the differences are not so different. Like the people over there are not so different than the people over there. Like there's an equanimous state starting to happen and anything that has a life in anywhere in the universe guess what has a death and anything that has a death had a life but also had a birth so there's three things that every living thing in the universe abides to and that is creation preservation so we're talking birth life and then what's next death, transformation. Um, and so Kali is all of that. She, she reminds us of these cycles and these are called the three faces of Shakti. Shakti is feminine, universal, creative energy. And Shakti, uh, Kali just reminds us of these cycles and she embodies these cycles. So um, that's what this, this is starting to say here. My teacher is starting to read about, she's bringing us into awareness of the full cycle of creation, preservation, and transformation. This is a big part of Kali's work. 
Wearing bone ornaments, a garland of bones, is akin to saying that we not only accept the birth creation and preservation sustaining aspects of Kali, but we also accept her as death transformation change. I wear transformation as an ornament, keeping it close to my skin. Yoginis, Dakinis, and deities in, the, in these particular lineages often wear bone ornaments as markers of having attained inner qualities, also known as yogic cities, as well as having embraced the dance of life and the dance of death as a single form of union. This aspect of Kali tells the story of Kali's bone ornaments, which she wears in the cremation grounds when covered with ashes from funeral pyres. This bone mala garland moves and bumps against her body as she dances life and death and preservation into a seamless whole. She says, I am here within, I am here with you in life, wearing a garland of jasmine and hibiscus, and I shall be with you in death, wearing my bone ornaments. Remember this and let your fear be eased. I will always be with you. Often Kali is seen uplifting one of her hands in what is called the Abhaya Mudra. She is often also seen, um, it's kind of hard to show it this way, with her boon giving mudra. So you'll often see Kali, she's got a whole bunch of weapons, a wet, fresh head that's been recently severed, and she may have a really wrathful face. She may have a sweet face, but she is letting you know Fear not, and I am offering to you, I am giving you bounty and abundance all at the same time. This is to be celebrated, and this is all why we dance while wearing her bone ornaments as a garland. So this is also today why I'm going to be introducing the two new dance series, or the two new um, series. One will be the preliminary leading into ODC dance and one will actually be the ODC dance. I'm going to get to those in a moment. Um, so before I talk about the dancing aspect, does anyone have any questions? I know this is kind of a big drop here. Um, it's big for me to be this raw in front of you all and sharing about um, Kali. But since it's a since it's Kali's yuga, what you know, speaking about Kali is usually, um, hey, beautiful Vina Bliss. Um, since I mean, Kali is usually you don't talk about her. I mean, in India, I I learned that the hard way. People will people that just never talk to me again after I mentioned her name. So even in India, she's misunderstood. But it's Kali yuga. We're seeing the display outside. We're seeing the prophecies of Kali Yuga right outside the door. Some of us have it inside their door. Um, and so I haven't really seen anyone talking about Kali Yuga and talking about how we're actually right on time. We're right on time with Kali Yuga right now. So um, does anyone have any questions? If you do, please type. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or if you have any comments. And then, um, I'm going to share with you about this two-part, four-week series, specifically, I'm taking off my socks because I'm going to show you a little dance, too. Um, so why I'm offering this two-part series in, in this time of what I'm considering Kali Yuga peaking, Kali's Yuga is peaking right now, um, so that was from my Yogini teacher's book. Now I'm going to just briefly show you um, about the upcoming series. 
if I can get to it. Here we go. All right, so we have two series coming up, and I'll I'll get to I'll get the details out to you more soon. How do I spell that? Kali. Okay, great. So we have Kali, and we have Yuga. So there we go, Kendall. Kali Yuga. Good question. This is Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is um, an ancient language. It's considered the the Sanskrit sounds are considered to have been born from the great mothers of the universe um, who are called matrika. So these are yoginis. They're, they're like original um, mother archetypes, mothers of the universe. And it's believed that Sanskrit um, was birthed from them, the sounds, and then sages and sacred folks super tuned in compiled it into a language, Sanskrit, and it's one of the most ancient languages that are still used, still um, spoken and taught, and it's just really amazing language. So uh, Kali Yuga, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Miss Avina, I, there's rules. Uh, one of them I broke today. So I have three rules about my Yogini teacher. I only share her name, and her book to, to my innermost students. So, um, and, and until today, I don't ever read publicly about her from her book either, but I was guided to read from her book today. So um, for those who want to learn uh, or even study with my Yogini teacher, some, she's, she's gonna do that at one of these days, um, reach out to me if you wanna go onto the inner realms of my teachings, happy to do that. Um, reach out. And I will let you know, well, a good way to start would be doing one of these series. So, um, so this series is starting the end of this month. Where do we come out of Kali Yuga? Oh, yes, Jean, great question. Well, so um, this is what I started in at the beginning. Actually, I'm going to get to your question in a minute. Um, but so uh, and in answer to your question, Avina, um, this first series coming up at the end of the month, starting April 29th, this is not going to be a dance class. This is going to be the inner alchemies book that lead us into the dance. Actually, the fourth week we are going to dance. Um, Bumi Pranam is a, is a prayer dance. But this series is the inner network required before we can do Indian classical dance, ODC, and then I like to actually take women all the way and do temple dance. So um, this four week series, we are gonna talk about, uh, well, first we have to talk about her story. So the her story of the dance, the gypsies, the whole thing, that will be our first class. Then the second one is what I really, I love talking about the science of new mudra. So mudras are the hand gestures and I am gonna, just share everything I can within an hour. Um, and the idea of the mudras is that is when you're the temple dancer, you're actually bringing the mysteries of the universe through your yogically tuned body, mind, energy, and then from the heart, out come the mudras in this language of the hands. Um, so that's week two. Week three is going to be the inner alchemies of the yogini temple dancer so where the yogini and the temple dancer i believe they are one when it's really done in its fullest capacity so inner alchemy means the it's um it's kind of like the inner qigong for uh dance so it's it's mind body energy collaboration on but on like more the inner yogic practices that would be week three and then week four we put it all together um, actually, you know what? Week three should really be when we talk about the energy rivers visualization. Well, no, because we put that all together. Anyway, the fourth week is we put it all together and then we do Bumi Pranam, which is a prayer moving dance. So that is um, the series that'll be running on Tuesdays. And then Wednesdays, we'll actually do the Odyssey dance. 